everyone, and thanks for tuning in. I apologize for the extended hiatus, but life kind of got in the way, the way it does sometimes. So, uh, just a quick update. The Sunday Hangouts are now going to happen on Saturday at some time. We're going to be switching this into the future, I think. But that's not what you came here to hear. So let's go ahead and look at this thing here. Is atheism a religion? No. Let's not look at atheism from a superficial point of view, but let's go deep into this belief system. There is no belief system. In the same way that you probably don't even think about the gods you're not aware of, I also don't think about them. That's all atheism is. I do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and you, apparently a Muslim, also do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That's all atheism is. Yes, it is said that atheism is a lack of belief in gods or a god. You see, there are two ways to apply the word atheist to someone, and you have defined it as this one. So concerning the Greek gods, or the Greco-Roman gods, Zeus, Thor, Pluto, Aphrodite, and so on, you do not believe in them, or you hold no belief in them. So for your definition in part one, you are an atheist the same as I am, by your own definition. I'm glad you defined it, by the way. A lot of people do not. However, you mean it in the second way which can be inferred from this. Which is to say a theist is the opposite of an atheist. Which is not true. Because every theist also has gods they do not believe in. But I see we're going to ignore your own definition as we go forward here, and pretend that you only mean that someone does not believe in any god. And this is a very different thing to which I am party. But when you look deeply into uh, atheism, and when you speak to atheists, you begin to see that atheism isn't just a lack of belief in gods, but there is more to it. No, there is nothing more to it. Kafir, infidel, blasphemer, abrogate are all words that fit the first definition of your definition of atheism, which is to say, someone who does not believe in your god specifically, you are calling an atheist. Because you will say that the others are just infidels, or they are people who do not believe in your god and are therefore atheists. So you are in fact saying an atheist is someone who doesn't believe in your god specifically. If you were to say it was someone who simply does not believe in a god or gods, then you would be part of that because you do not believe in certain gods. You find that when you make comparisons between atheism and religion, that there are certain similarities. The only similarity that atheism shares with, for example, Islam, is that both Muslims and atheists do not believe in Quetzalcoatl or Marduk. For example, in every religion, there are either gods or a god who is worshipped. Wrong. Buddhism, for example, is a religion which does not worship anything and does not have a god. It's completely autonomous. So, um, yeah, in case you didn't know it, there are actually atheist religions who do not believe in your god. Other examples include Jainism and Hinduism, which does not require a god. And the atheist worships two kinds of gods. No, we do not. But I'm going to let you continue so you can sound dumb all on your own. For the atheist, the first thing that they worship is the god of self. No, you're incorrect. Some people worship themselves, but we don't do it because we're atheists. In fact, there are some atheists who are nihilists who do not believe in anything. And secondly, the atheist worships the animals as gods. I'm not sure if I heard that right, but I think he said that atheists worship animals as gods. This is not correct. 
Some pagans and Wiccans engage in that sort of worship, but then again they actually believe that those things are indeed gods or spirits or what have you. Again, it's not an atheist thing and I'm not sure where he's pulling this from, and he really doesn't elaborate any further. So, um, next point. In the mind of an atheist, the atheist at his core does not want to be morally or spiritually accountable to anyone, especially to God. No, it doesn't matter what I want. It doesn't matter if I think an afterlife is poetic. And you've got to remember there are some people who are morally accountable, like Buddhists, who don't believe in a god and yet still act as though there is one. So you have some explaining to do. If the reason you're saying you do not believe in Odin is only because you do not want to be held responsible to him, rather than the fact that you simply just do not believe in him. Do you see where the breakdown comes here? Again, by your own definition, you do not want to be held accountable to some other god, so you do not want to believe they exist, and that's the only reason you can say they don't. But when I apply the same logic to you, you say it's wrong, even though I'm not applying it at all, because I'm telling you I don't believe in your god, for the same reason you don't believe in any other god, but you're too stubborn or too intellectually dishonest to admit that. An atheist would like to commit adultery, fornication, or any kind of sin without the sense that there is a God who is not pleased with sin. So what you're saying is, as an atheist, if I were to fornicate, that would be bad. But if I believe in Freya, the goddess of fertility among other things, and then engage in fornication, why I'm completely okay because I believe in a God who is okay with it? Do you see the problem you're introducing here? Don't worry, I'm going to let you walk into your own wall, but I just thought I'd point out that it's there. And so ultimately, the atheist exalts self above God. So what you're really saying is, by choosing not to believe in all those other gods, you're really just saying you know better than all of those other gods. Interesting. And so, in the life of the atheist, the atheist is the god. No, generally, the people who believe they are gods are religious people, like Kim Jong-un, David Koresh, or Charles Manson. By definition, atheists do not believe in any god, not even ourselves. I've often asked atheists uh, this question as a test. If you were given the evidence that you need as proof that God exists, then would you submit and worship God? No, I would not worship such a God. Though if you could show me he was real, I would certainly have to believe it, in the same way I believe in gravity. The difference is, if your God is as powerful as you claim, then he would be personally responsible for every bad thing ever, including pedophilia, rape, murder, genocide, and everything he chooses not to stop or has an active hand in. Let me tell you, if I found evidence that evil was real in the world, would you worship it? No, you seem like a reasonable person who would want to be against evil things regardless of the consequence. But maybe I'm wrong. And very often, most atheists would refuse to worship God, even if given the evidence. So what you're saying is, if I can prove to you that President Trump exists, then you will unfalteringly do whatever he tells you to. So atheism isn't so much about the lack of belief in God or gods, but atheism is really the suppression of the existence of God. Let's hear that again, but let's insert some other words. So Islam isn't so much about the lack of belief in Yahweh, but Islam is really the suppression of the existence of God. Quetzalcoatl. That's right, you don't believe in a religion because you believe in that god. No, you disbelieve in all the other gods because you don't want them to be real. Romans 1 verse 21 to 23 says, So uh, apparently he's Christian and I got that wrong. Interesting, the logic still stands. This brings us to the other gods that atheists worship. They worship the animals, as stated in Romans 1 verse 23. 
most religions have people who worship God or gods whom they believe to be the source of life and the reason for their human existence. I recommend you all go read the next verses that came after that. Again, it was Romans 1. You'll find that God actually forced us to not believe, forced us to do bad things, and so on. For example, in Christianity, we believe that the source of life, the source of our human existence, is through the hands of the God of the Bible. Which is a really handy way of saying, God created every terrorist ever, and forced them to do whatever they did. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Not to beat this over the head, but if man was created and man is in God's image, then God was created. However, with atheism, the source of human existence is not God. Hey everybody, get Captain Obvious on the line. I think he's got a new sidekick. But according to atheists, the source of human existence are the other animals, with the theory of evolution being the main doctrine. Why do you suppose that we can breed certain cows for beef and other ones for milk? It's called selective breeding, and it's a principle based in evolution. Your Bible claims that if you breed animals in front of spotted sticks, you will get spotted animals. If your way is correct, please show us. Otherwise, quit saying you don't believe in evolution. And this is another reason why atheism is a religion. Most religions have a set of beliefs. Fallacy of conflation. You're conflating the two different terms of believe. The type of belief we're talking about has to do with the fact that we can show evidence for evolution. If you want to show the same kind of evidence for your god, to provide for the same definition of belief, then give us a picture of your god. Show us the supposed floodgates where the rains come from. Show us where the waters go when they reside. Show us the pillars of creation. Show us your flat earth. Show us your god, physically. We can show you the process whereby evolution works, and we can reproduce it. You cannot show us your god in the same way. So quit pretending that you mean belief in the same way, you intellectually dishonest swine. Most religions have a doctrine about life and the origin of life, for which it takes faith to believe in that doctrine. Two things. The first one, evolution doesn't deal with the origin of life. That's abiogenesis. If you do not understand that word, then stop talking about it. Secondly, we don't require faith because we can test it. All the different breeds of dogs are a result of the process that we can observe that we call evolution. There's a hundred year old study going on right now in which they've been selectively breeding corn to have high or low oil content. And you know what? It works and it's predictable and we don't need faith to make those predictions. However, you do need faith for the prediction in the Old Testament about how to breed cattle in front of spotted versus striped sticks. If you believe your way is correct and you can demonstrate it, then go get your Nobel Prize. Otherwise, quit lying about things you don't understand. Because lying is a cardinal sin and we'll send you right to hell with me, right? The truth is, evolution cannot be proved. There is no observable evidence for evolution. It's a good thing I have the Google and I can just go search for the evidence for evolution. And the first site is necsi.edu discussing the actual evidence for evolution. Now, this guy could have gone through and said why all these points are wrong, but instead he didn't, because he knows he's full of shit. There is no scientific evidence for the origin of life in relation to the Big Bang. That's correct. Life did not originate in the Big Bang. Therefore, atheism requires faith. So what you're saying is you have faith that no other god has it right, and yours must be the only correct way. 
but you're complaining about other people doing just the same thing? I do not understand you, funny little man. Just like many religions. So is atheism a religion? And I still stand by my conviction that atheism is not and can never be a religion. I invite you to leave a comment below telling me what you think. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And also share this with all your friends so they can be part of the conversation as well. It's no fun to have a one-sided conversation after all. But as always, this has been Reverend JR signing off. Super Secret Ending Harmonica Jam Time! That has been the super secret ending harmonica jam time. Join us again.